In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. We gather today as the family of God, now back into this season of what we so prosaically call ordinary time, but into this season of discipleship. And we'll hear in our readings today this call, this invitation into an encounter with the living God. Let's prepare ourselves then to allow God to do his work in our lives. But first, acknowledging that we are sinners and praying for pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And we worship God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully plead, hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Thank you. 
Thanks be to God. At long last, God heard my complaint. God taught me a new song, a hymn of praise. You did not seek offerings or ask for sacrifices, but you drilled ears for me to hear. Yes, I said, I will come to live by your written word. I want to do what pleases you. Your teaching is in my heart. I celebrate your justice before all the assembly. I do not hold back the story. Lord, you know this is true. to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which translated is the Christ. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Kephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the characteristics of Christianity is that we are the people of the book, or at least in a lot of people's understanding. And certainly that would be more true 
after the, the Reformation. And certainly it will be more true of the Protestant churches. For us, the book has this kind of strange uh, understanding. You know, we, we hear it in these snippets rather than allowing it to be something that we read and encounter. But if the whole encounter with God, and, and when I was you know, growing up, this was just this, this closed book. It was, you know, we had the, the big family Bible on our shelf, and it would just you know, slowly gather more dust. We prayed the rosary. We would uh, have you know, those four times of, of family prayer. But actually encountering God was something that just didn't kind of happen. We hear in the first reading today that the word of God was, was not common at that time that people didn't hear the word of God, that the Spirit wasn't so present at that time. And I think we can say that the same for so much of, of our lives, that sense of not being able to, to know that, that our religion, and that particularly as Christians, is meant to be dynamic, is meant to be this experience of encounter, not just something that we just choose to engage in, we just choose to, to listen to the words or to, to read the words of Scripture, and that's about it. But no, something way more active. The Lord spoke to Samuel, even though he didn't know what, you know, who was calling to him, what this was all about, what this meant. And it would radically change and transform Samuel, just as it will radically and, tra- and transform and change the lives of those first disciples who follow the way of Jesus. We're introduced to two of them in the Gospel today, one of whom is named, one of whom is not. And they're followers already of John the Baptist. And that makes sense. There's this openness there. There's this desire within them to seek the truth, to do whatever it is that God is calling them to do. And so they're wanting to be faithful. They're wanting to follow. And so this example that John gives of this radical new possibility of actually being engaged in their faith in a way that makes sense, not just in the the dull and and dusty worship of God that was present in the temple, but this radical new way of of going down into the wilderness and, and seeing how can we listen to the Word of God, how can we encounter God in new and fresh ways. And so when John, in his humility, points to Jesus and says, Behold, here is the Lamb of God. They, of course, are are free to to change in their devotion from being disciples of John to now become disciples and followers of Jesus. But it's interesting that they're not the ones to ask the question. As they begin to, to simply do that physical process of walking behind Jesus, it's Jesus who takes the initiative. He turns to them and says, what are you looking for? And as people who have just begun to read this Gospel of John, I'm sure John has in mind that those who are reading are going to be having the same kinds of questions. You know, what are we looking for? What do we want? What do we want our lives to be about? Now, the the question that the disciples reply with, Master, Rabbi, and it's beautiful that John wants us to be able to encounter this. He's, it's clear that he was likely to be the other disciple that is unnamed. And so he's giving us these beautiful remembrances, the actual Aramaic words that Jesus spoke, the time of day, when all these things transpired, who else was there. He's giving us the eyewitnesses account, but he's not wanting us to be disengaged or alienated in any way. So whenever he uses one of these Aramaic words, as he writes to the Greek-speaking audience, he translates them all into the Greek. Because he doesn't want anybody to miss out the beauty and the richness, either of the original or to, to be confused and lost in those words. Again, it's a great challenge for us as Christians in contemporary society to remember that we still have this obligation. What are the words that we miss? What are the things, the experiences that we don't allow other people to experience and encounter because we use language or words that are confusing or that are insider's language and don't allow others to experience that richness. But they simply say, Master, where are you staying? 
where do you live? And the invitation that Jesus then gives to them is simple and yet beautiful. Come and see. He's always inviting us in the same way. Always allowing us to, to not just hear a set of teachings, not just to, to experience things that are spoken or are meant to be believed. He wants us to encounter. And so he invites us into that presence. He invites us into relationship. Come and see is the language of relationship. It's the language of encounter. It's the language of somebody being invited into a friendship. That's what God is always wanting for us. Not just that we encounter him in dry and dusty words, but in actual lived experience. And so they come and they see. And John tells us it was about four o'clock in the afternoon when all of this happens. You know, there's a vitality. He wants to remember there's something happened in that encounter. His life was never the same. And he is able to remember it. You know, just as I'm able to remember that moment when I was 17 and I first heard the gospel proclaimed when I was in an Antioch youth group. And, you know, it was about three o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday afternoon, sitting in that schoolroom in Bega, um, St. Pat's Bega, the primary school. And to hear the message of the gospel, and it finally broke through. It wasn't just something that I could believe with my head. It was something that I could experience with my heart. It was something that I could encounter as a person that I could believe in, a person who loved me and that I could love. And that, ch- that change and that transformation is available to all of us. And Andrew, we're told, was one of the two. And Andrew doesn't want to leave it there. He says, look, this is too amazing. This person that we've met, this person, Jesus, he seems to be the Messiah. Perhaps he is the Messiah. And so what does he do? He goes and shares it. He goes and finds his brother, Simon. Simon, come. Come and meet the one who seems to to have all of the answers, who's able to, to engage us in this actual relationship, who seems to be able to open the way to God. Come, come with me. Come and meet him. Come and encounter him. Come and allow your life to also be, be touched. Allow your questions to be answered in the person of Jesus. And this is the basics of evangelization. This sense that when we discover this truth for ourselves, when we encounter something so good and so wonderful, of course we want to share it. Of course we want others to also encounter the living God and the love that we've discovered and that we've encountered. And in that moment, Simon is also changed. Simon is even renamed. Because God calls us and knows us with such intimacy and such delight that our old identity, as wonderful as it is, he wants to change and transform it. For us today, as we continue during this season of discipleship, let's indeed allow the word of God to be heard by us. Let's have that same attentiveness to that Samuel had in the temple. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Let's allow the voice of God to call us and invite us into truth. Invite us into that, that relationship that we can't deny, that relationship that nourishes us, that allows us to experience the tenderness of love with God. It is also too precious and too amazing to be kept to ourselves, that we need to share it. We need to find others to say to them, come, come with me. Come and see and come and meet the living God present here in this church. Stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray to our loving God to show us the way to peace in the world and to hear our prayers. For the church, to listen to the voice of the Lord, so we may respond with courage and resourcefulness in God's service. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For responsibility in world leaders, to bring all people safely out of the pandemic and recession. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who try hard to follow God's call in their lives, to rely on Jesus, our teacher, and follow as did the apostles. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those working in essential services and their families, that God will watch over them and keep them safe in these difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those facing financial hardship, that governments and communities work together to relieve their suffering. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples to be blessed by God with deepening love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our parish to be living signs of God's compassion and mercy in and for the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those who have died because of COVID-19 and those killed on our roads and in the water this holiday season. And for Cecilia Curtin. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs written in our book of prayer intentions. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Gentle and loving God, you know there are great needs in the world, and you hear all our prayers. In hope we pray through the power of your Spirit, and in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, 
so we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for wherever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your program church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn to those around us and share the grace and peace of the Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated as Father Andrew speaks. Stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the God of all grace, the God of kindness and delight, continue to fill your hearts and your minds with the knowledge and love of God. And may that love overflow and allow you to share that love with others that are present in your life. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon you this day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen.